Hey guys, remember remember how I said I was gonna make another video and then I didn't for like two years, <laughs> literally two years. Look, I did it, I made another video. Um, not a tutorial video, but I do wanna make some more of those soon, but um, kinda just wanted to like finally get the ball rolling with myself. So I just did a quick sort of video about things that I love in the studio that aren't ceramic tools. First of all, this is so awkward to me. I looking at a camera and talking alone in a room is, how do people do this? Like, this is weird. <laughs> so bear with me. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not um, too awkward. So let's get into it. Um, first of all, it's important to be as frumpy as possible when you're entering the studio. Otherwise you're not a real potter. I need coffee every morning. I don't even care if it's decaf. I just like coffee. So a really handy thing to have with you if you like a warm beverage in the morning and it gets cold over and over again uh, is a mug warmer and i've had this one for like probably over a decade now and it still works an old roommate left it and so i just kept it it was originally labeled as a candle warmer so yeah but if you just go on online and search mug warmer you can get a really basic one like this for literally like ten dollars and then there's fancier ones too that are like wireless or i don't know at this point you could probably like hook it up to your phone and control the temperature of your beverage <laughs> via an app or something i don't know but you can get a really basic one for cheap and it just keeps your coffee or tea or whatever hot all freaking day it's awesome and I, i'm a slow drinker with the coffee i kind of nurse it all day so it's <laughs> literally hours and i'm like still drinking it and it's still hot so it's kind of really essential for me to have. I'd be really sad without it. Second of all, something I use every single day and when I don't have them around, I'm noticeably crabby, is little hair clips to keep my plastic on my work. So handy. They come in all different sizes. They are little claws, so they clip anything. They're cheap. I don't even use them for my hair, um, but I have a whole bunch that's been in the studio for a long time and I like to keep my work sort of half wrapped up a lot of the time so I can just work on one side without everything else sort of drying out. And these, you can just kind of roll your plastic up any which way you want and just stick a little hair clip on there and it holds it. It's so useful. <laughs> that hair spray bottle you see there, it's, I mean, we all probably have a spray bottle around. Um, it's really hard to find a good one though. Like they seem to break and break down really easy, you know? But my friend Bethany that owns the studio here found these spray bottles that are freaking awesome. And they're actually hairdresser spray bottles. So you can, squeeze it a whole lot and it has a continuous spray um, or you can just kind of squirts it a little bit and just a little it'll just give you a little spritzer but they work really well we've had them for over a year now and they still work she bought three or four of them just another thing also you can find on amazon or wherever by looking up hairdresser spray bottle like come in different sizes but it's such a nice mist even mist and it's just really like once like I, I, you can't ever go back once you get one of these to those clunky industrial spray bottles that spit at you and get clogged up and fall over on the table when there's no water in them thirdly is hardy backer board which is an awesome substitute for something to wedge on like a lot of people will have canvas on the table which holds a lot of dust and is really hard to clean and then some people have plaster top tables which is which i really like those too but then you have to mix up a bunch of plaster and pour it and it's such a pain in the ass um so if you go to home depot or lowe's or wherever i hear it's what it's really meant for is to go behind tile in your bathroom so it's meant to get wet and not mess up um, and not get moldy and weird and expand. It's really hard. It comes in thin sheets. It's super lightweight. You can cut it to whatever size you need. We literally just have it attached to a work table in here. Um, it's just cut to size and screwed on and we wedge on it and it's been really, really nice. It sucks up moisture really well and it just wipes up really easily so you don't have clay dust floating around in the air. Um, and then we also have a bunch of it cut into like different size squares and stuff. So you can just like put work on and move move around the studio whenever you need to going to that from using canvas and plaster and stuff for years and years it's like i don't i don't want anything else in my studio now i just want the hardy backer board it's awesome all right next up is uh some kind of table surface you can raise up and down at any level you need if you're in a studio with a low table and you don't really have another option or you don't have like seating that you can move up and down <laughs> you like that 
What I use is just a laptop table. It's like meant to go over you, over you on your lap or something if you're just wanting to type um, on the couch or on the bed or something. And it has legs that just fold out so I can raise it up a few inches or I can extend the legs to raise it up a little bit more um, or just have it on the table and it's just like maybe two or three inches up and I use it all the time because otherwise if you're at a lower table and you're trying to like do some detail work on a low part of your piece and then you're like you're like all hunched over <laughs> all day and then later you're like why does my back hurt I don't know what's going on and then Bethany has a similar table that's hers mine was like 35 bucks and I think hers is a little fancier and I think she said it might have been around a hundred dollars but hers raises up a little bit more customizable to a different height um, and she's been using it for a long time and she loves it and she likes to stand stand and work instead of sit and work so she can raise it up to her standing height but either way um, it's really gonna save you in the long run so you're not craning your neck all day Mine has a little drawer on the side of it too, which is really cute and handy. I don't think I use it, but you could put some tools in there if you want, it's pretty cute. All right, this one's kind of new to me. I read about it maybe in Ceramics Monthly or something a few years ago and was like, oh, that's a good idea. And then I never got around to trying it out. So you just need rubber bands, which you probably already have laying around in the studio anyway. And you, if you don't want your glaze to look really nasty like this, like you know how it just gets, clogged up around your bottle and it's just like flaking everywhere and then you can't open it later. <laughs> if you put a rubber band around your open jar, then you can squeegee your brush off against it rather than the side of your container so that you don't have to get a bunch of glaze gunked up all over your container. First time I've tried it, so naturally I'm probably, I'm really lucky that I didn't just drop, <laughs> just drop the whole bottle. So don't do that, don't drop your glaze bottle. And I probably would use a thicker rubber band, but this is, you know, just all I could find at the moment. But it worked really well so I think it's going to be something I continue to use. Yeah, you can just squeegee off the excess glaze when you're done all over your hands, defeating the purpose of trying to be neat and tidy. You know, no big deal. Just get it all over the glaze jar. Who cares, right? All right, this one is a clamp selfie light, which you wouldn't think to look for, but I think Bethany got this because it's got a little phone holder on it and it's kind of good if you're trying to take photos and so you have a good light source. But I just use it to keep my pieces lit while I work. It has a switch on it that you can adjust the brightness of it and you can adjust how yellow or blue your light is. So if you have like an overhead light that's kind of awkward, my, my pieces are kind of like always in a shadow from where I sit because the light's kind of almost behind me. So sometimes I'll drag this over and clip it and I can just move the light wherever I want and have it as bright as I want. And it just hooks into a USB charger like your phone does on, on the wall. So made for selfies, but way more useful as an actual working light as opposed to like a clamp light that would be really clunky. We do have a clamp light like this one in the studio that a good little lamp, but it has that big lamp head on it. That would be, that would really be in my way if I was trying to light my work better. And it's, you know, just on or off. There's no dimming switch on it or anything like that. So the selfie light works really well. Um, and the last thing that is probably the least exciting thing, but probably the most important thing is an air purifier to keep silica dust out of your studio. Especially if you work from home and you're not in a facility that has ventilation already, you want to look for an air purifier that's going to filter silica particles out of the air. I looked at the micron size of that up once when I was looking for an air filter myself and I don't don't know what that is off the top of my head, but um, if you're going to get an air purifier for this purpose, I would contact the company and make sure that it will filter silica particles out of the air. Particles? Particle? Silica particles out of the air <laughs> because the silica dust that's in all of our clay and air glazes and stuff is what builds up in your lungs over the time if you're not keeping your air clean. So if you're not quite as clean as you should be in the studio, and I bet most of us aren't, this will help keep your air clean. It's almost kind of like smoking for years and years and you can get silicosis, which is really, really bad. And it's, it's kind of like getting emphysema. So you want to make sure you're not breathing in a bunch of clay dust all the time. Ours kind of kick on automatically when it senses that the air is not as clean as it should be. And it's really quiet though. We have two of them, one in the front and one of the in the middle of the studio. Um, I'm not sure where Bethany got these, but probably Amazon. If I can find a link to these items, um, I'll put it in the description below. But if you, you know, if you just Google any of them, I'm sure you'll find a very similar item, if not the same one. But I'll try to put links to everything um, in the description box. So that's it. That's, that's my favorite non-ceramic studio items. <laughs> Have. Hopefully it's helpful to you. Um, 
hopefully you get some use out of it um, and there's some things in there you didn't think of. If there's items in your studio that I don't have on this list, uh, let me know in the comments. I'll check them out and maybe I'll update this in a few months with some new items. I'm going to try to do videos on a regular basis. I have ideas. I don't want everything to be like a tutorial how to make this. I kind of have some sort of bigger picture ideas in mind. I mean, I always want to do tutorial videos for you guys, but I had other things in mind like how to think differently about your art and kind of finding your own voice type of stuff and just stuff like that. Maybe I'll do some like studio vlogs. I don't know if that's something y'all want. <laughs> um, I am a full-time potter, so it, I think it would be helpful for me to talk about that and how I've gotten to that point maybe for some of you. So I want to try to do at least one video a month, hopefully more than that, but um, I do do ceramics full-time, so I have to kind of squeeze it in where I can. So yeah, also I don't want to constantly be like like and subscribe because i hate that and you know how to use youtube like if you like the video you're gonna like it if you want to subscribe you're gonna subscribe but i mean the reason everybody says that on youtube over and over again is because it does really help get the video seen more so it is helpful if you do click the like button but i'm not gonna hassle you about it all the time and if you didn't like it that's fine no i still like myself so um that's all that's it that's all i got hope you enjoyed yourself bye